Hello, welcome to English 2 course. We are your teacher, Trần Thị Lan, Trần Tuy Yến from Faculty of Foreign Languages of Portman University of Technology and Education. Before beginning the lesson, first I want to know have you ever imagined that you have a foreign foreign friend and you really like him or her so you want to attract her by your personal story but unfortunately you cannot respect the ideas like a man named Brooks in this clip he decided to ask his friend Joy for a piece of advice and then Joy told him a story so let's see how is um, his friend's story you have to remember, it is just the story. I'll try to control myself. Okay. <clears throat> Years ago, when I was backpacking across Western Europe... You were backpacking across Western Europe? Have a nice six more months, Ross. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, I'm sorry, please, please. You, you were in Western Europe, and... I was just outside of Barcelona hiking in the foothills of Mount Tibidabo. I was at the end of this path, and I came to a clearing, and there was a lake, very secluded, and there were tall trees all around. It was dead silent, gorgeous. And across the lake, I saw a beautiful woman bathing herself, but she was crying. Why? <laughs> As you can see, um, Joy, Joy tell Rock a story, but his friend's story didn't seem effective that much, right? So, are there any principle or expression that you should follow when you need to tell a story? I believe that you can answer this question when finishing this video. Today we will continue with Unifor Adventure, especially about how to tell a story with both speaking and writing skills. So let's get started with the first part. In the first part, we will learn how to tell a real life story and how to respond to good and bad news. There are some ways for you to start your story. Um, in traditional story, often start with the phrase "one upon a time." However, if you are going to tell your story after someone else had already spoken, you can say something like, "That reminds me." Hearing your story reminds me of when some something similar happened to me and then beginning your story so now how do you tell your story um your story should be quite short try to keep it grammatically simple as well so that it's easier to follow make it easier for listeners to understand by uh, you can use sequencing works or linking works uh, some use some uh, sequencing works uh, are these works that show the uh, the time order of the events. For example, uh, first of all, secondly, briefly, then later, before all that, final, etc. Uh, linking work. Um, we use this work to link your ideas for the listener. Um, linking work can you uh, can be used to show reason result. Uh, context information, in, in additional information, and to summarize, uh, for example, as a result because of on those in stock, etc. Some other things you should pay attention to. It is about tenses. If you want to talk uh, to to tell a story that happened in the past, you should. Use past symbol or past continuous tense. 
Uh, another is about vocabulary. You try to use wide range of books to make your story become more interesting. For example, instead of using nice or bad, um, you can use beautiful or terrible. That is all about important things we need to consider when telling a story. So how about the listeners? How they can react to um, the storytellers? Uh, let's move on to pronunciation intonation for responding. Um, report, responding to good news. Uh, as you may be familiar about listeners using in, using intonation to show interest in normal conversation, in telling story is quite the same. Um, uh, when you respond to good news, when someone say something good in their story, the intonation of the statement go up, um, like uh, go up to show a positive intonation. Uh, for example, wow, that sounds exciting. That's great. Really? What? Uh, when you respond to bad news, um, uh, intonation of the uh, of the statement go down to show a negative feeling. Uh, for example, oh dear, that awful, unfortunate. Really? What? Yeah, that's all about um, pronunciation, intonation for responding. That's easy, right? Hello, you have just learned how to tell a story. Now we will learn how to write story. So next move to the next part, a story of survival. Before writing, there are some important activities that you should prepare to make your story become more interesting. The first one, let's think about some information that may be included in your story. This may be location, or weather. People, why they were there, or it also includes any sudden and unexpected events that change situation. Then, how the situation ended. And did it have a happy or sad ending? Now it's time for practice. Let's read the story Boy Survive 50 Day Lost Energy in your textbook and find out which information is included in the story. Have you done? So which information is included in the story? Look at the second sentence. 50 days ago, the reading neighbor suddenly disappeared from the island of a tarful in a small pole. This sentence gives us the information about location, people, and why they were there. So what event that changed the situation? Keep reading to the fourth sentence. Eventually, a fishing boat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean safely pulled down from the sea. And the last one, now they are back happily with their family so at that did they a happy ending. Now we turn to all the activity. Look at the story again and we realize that we often use the effort to make a story more interesting. So, underline the effort in the story to know that.
we can easily see some lead abrupt such as suddenly, immediately, sadly, eventually, safely, badly, surprisingly, and final happily. So why we should use the adverb when writing a story? The answer is because of each function. We often use the adverb to comment on the whole clause or sentence. For example, eventually they show another seat in the distance. The second function is the write the verb, how someone did something or how it happened. For example, he slowly swam toward the island, also he swam toward the island slowly. The third function is to define an adjective. For example, the three survivors were amazingly healthy. And now it's time for exercise. Let's mark the adverb in the story with the rule. Comment on the whole clause or sentence, write the verb or describe the adjective. Let's start it. Check your answer and ask me if you have any question. Before writing, we need time to practice more about the adverb. So look at the first sentence. The claim was dangerous, and the adverb is incredibly. In this situation, the adverb is used to define the objective, so we will put it in front of the word dangerous. So we will have the claim was incredibly dangerous. Another sentence. It started raining. You had an umbrella. So the effort fortunately in this situation is you to comment on the whole sentence. You had an umbrella. So we will have it started raining. Fortunately, you had an umbrella. Similarly, they were locked in the forest for hours, but they found grow again. So the effort eventually used to comment on the whole glow they found the road again. So we have they were locked in the forest for hours, but eventually they found the road again. Now time for writing. Write a story. It can be your own story or a story you read in your paper. Remember to use the effort to make your story more interesting and think about the question and make notes before writing. What if it happened? What were the weather like? Who were they and what were they doing? What unexpected event happened? What happened next? And this it has a happy or sad ending. After finishing, exchange story with your partner and you the question to check your partner's story. What information is included in your partner's story? And the he or she usually effort effectively. And this is all about the lesson today. Thank you for your watching. See you in next video. If you have any question, feel free to ask me.